stories behind the news. For weeks now, we've been searching for one man, and tonight a mysterious telephone call has brought us here, in front of Cleopatra's Needle. Yes, here to the Thames Embankment, a place which attracts all classes of society, from the good people down to the dregs of humanity. <laughs> Many of you will remember some months ago a football match between Sebastopol Rangers and Wood Lane Athletic. Just a moment. That's a camera. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, this man, Mr. Eric Sykes, is the referee of that most controversial match. I have nothing to hide. Then may I ask why you're so obviously wearing a false beard? No. Well, ever since that match, we've been trying to persuade Mr. Sykes into a studio in order to get from him the full story, but he has continually refused. How did you know I'd be here? Uh, well, I told them. Well, how did you know I'm trying to forget it? Look at the things I've been to at the house. Kids blowing whistles, bus conductors, get off. Every time I saw Mr. Brown, he had a notebook out. I, well, that's why I think you ought to tell your side of the story to clear yourself. I have nothing to hide. I told all of the FA inquiry I have nothing to hide. Weren't you suspended, though? Yes, from a lamp post. <laughs> <laughs> you lost to the policeman. The policeman? It was the constable who lifted me up. <laughs> it was a very brave and courageous thing you did that day. <laughs> Mr. Bath, <laughs> viewers. It all happened on the day of a football match. I was waiting for the paper boy to arrive, and Eric was still asleep. Well, he's a very late sleeper. Oh, the paper boy's late this morning, Peter. Yes, I know it's Saturday, but it's still late. <laughs> ah, I think that's enough. Yes. <laughs> Morning. Morning, Milkman. Here. <laughs> I just heard a very funny thing. What's that? <laughs> I don't know how to tell you, really. What? I just met a fella down the street. Yeah, yeah. He told me. Wow, well, what did you tell you? <laughs> Come on. You'd never believe it. <laughs> he told me that your brother Eric is going to referee the big match this afternoon. <laughs> well, he is. Here <laughs> well, it is. The referee is Mr. Eric Sykes. Stone the crows. <laughs> and you've got the match for a draw, a home and an away. You've still no chance of winning. <laughs> I think Sebastopol Rangers will win, so there. Here. You've got a bet on them? Well, I've got a friendly arrangement with the lady at the bread shop, yes. <laughs> right. Thanks for the tip, Sebastopol Rangers, eh? <laughs> Get a bit. Oh, that's a good in there. <laughs> <laughs> The referee is Mr. Eric Sykes. <laughs> the referee is Mr. Eric Sykes. The referee is Mr. Oh, Eric, you're in all the papers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look wonderful. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Now, what's all this about the papers? Well, sit down, have a cup of tea, and we'll go through them. One moment. Right. <laughs> I'll sit there, then. Oh. <laughs> Eric, how did you come to be picked to be referee? It's the most important match of the season. They wanted mm. someone they could trust, someone they could rely on. Someone who knew the game backwards. Kindly, yet firm. Someone with the ability to earn the respect of both teams. And in spite of all that, they still chose you. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that unkindly. As a matter of fact, it's rather a compliment, really. Because if you did have any of those qualities, well, naturally, they would have chosen. <laughs> Not that you haven't got any of those qualities. It's just... Would you like another cup of tea? <laughs> 
I haven't met the first one yet. <laughs> you think they've made a mistake, don't you? Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I mean, it's such an important match like this. How could they make a mistake? It's just that I know you. <laughs> I'll go and get some breakfast. No, I don't want any breakfast. Yes, you do. No, I don't, not now. Oh, some nice boiled eggs. I've lost my appetite. And some toast. <laughs> oh, come and see, Eric. You must have some. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any breakfast. You've never missed breakfast before on such an important day like this. You must have something to eat. <laughs> I don't want any breakfast. That's final. Now, I don't want any arguments, please. Just one egg and a little bit of toast. What's your name? Oh. <laughs> don't start that. I'm not going to brook an argument. Well, I'm not arguing. I'm just saying I think... Get off. <laughs> off. You have fair warning. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I'm all strung up. <coughs> oh, all right, you can come back on again. <laughs> You were marvellous with your and that's just your name and get off and that psh and everything. <laughs> I thought you were just like a real referee. <laughs> Look, if I have to send someone off this afternoon, I hope he doesn't start crying like you. Oh, I'm sorry, Johnson. Dry your eyes, lad. I have to send you off. I know you kicked him in the face. Who doesn't at some time or another? Have you got your leg that high beats me, Johnson? <laughs> Don't split your trousers, have you? <laughs> Johnson, I'm going to restart the match and you can have first kick. Oh, but if he's naughty, Eric, you'll have to send him off. <laughs> Hello. You're speaking. Yes, Mr Turnbull, I did tell the milkman that I thought Sebastian Rangers had a good chance. Oh, well, just a little flutter with the lady at the bread shop, but... Na Parrot, I want you to be very honest with me. Have you had a bet on this match? Oh, well, only 20p. It's not the amount, it's the principle of the thing. Supposing Sebastopol Rangers win, what will people think? But you said yourself weeks ago you thought Sebastopol Rangers would win. Yes, but that was only before I knew I was going to referee the match. Oh, I see. But... No, not again. What does he want? Yes? I've just been a place to bet. Thanks for letting me know first. Know what? <laughs> <laughs> Big day, eh? <laughs> Just another day in the life of a referee. <laughs> well, good luck. I know you won't let us down. It's not the first match I've refereed, you know. Oh, I'll bet it isn't. A lovely house like this and everything. <laughs> you don't get that for nothing. Oh, no, Eric works too, you oh, know. Oh, yes, yes. You know, you're not the twit some people think you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an extra pint. Well, thank you. I've got to... Uh, 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 on me. What's <laughs> this for? Ah. Uh, <laughs> 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 you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Hurry, sacks. Hurry, sacks. Hurry, sacks. Is there something going on between you two? Not that I know of. Anyway, it was you he wants to scratch his back. He got a pint of milk from him. That's not like him. His wife only got a yoghurt on the wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Well, I'm just going down to the bread shop. I'm going to get this thing sorted out. OK. Like what? Like that in Sebastopol Paul Rangers colours. Oh, rubbish. I am the referee. Yes, but I'm not one of your players. I'm only going down to the corner. What is it? Off. <laughs> well, how do you want people to think that I am biased? <coughs> oh, it is the lady from... Uh, Eric, this is the lady from the bread shop. He knows. Hello, Madge. <laughs> You've got a nerve. After all the doughnuts I've slipped in your carrier bag. <laughs> <laughs> and all for a measly 20p. What, what's the matter? 
Well, when you bet me that Sebastopol Rangers would win, I didn't know that Ricky was refereeing. Ricky? Well, <laughs> what's that got to do with it? Well, Hattie tipped off the milkman and my shop has been jam-packed all morning with people wanting to place bets. Oh, dear. <laughs> you see what I mean? I haven't sold one loaf, nothing. Not one broken biscuit. Oh, it's all my fault. Well, I mean, the dishonesty that goes on, the underhandedness. I mean, I've always trusted you. I've never tried to fiddle you. What about that basket of fruit I sent you when you was ill? <laughs> and at half price. <laughs> yes. Well, let's forget our 20p. Well, I've already laid out 20 quid on Wood Lane Athletic. But <laughs> your 20p look a bit silly, doesn't it? <laughs> well, when you pay out, I'll go halves with you. Just a moment. What do you mean, when she pays out? I don't know who's going to win. The match hasn't started. Wood Lane Athletic might win. They better not. <laughs> Put fifty pound on Sebastopol Rangers <laughs> to pay off me bets for Wood Lane. <laughs> so it's up to you if you value your donuts. <laughs> Madge, never mind my donuts. <laughs> what do you mean it's up to me? You know full well. What upsets me is, as a friend, Ricky. <laughs> you might have let me know before the odds went up. Madge. Madge. Madge! What's all this Ricky and Madge, then? Uh, never mind about that. You see what's happened now? I can't referee the match. I'll have to withdraw. Oh, I, I am terribly sorry, Eric. Only she said she thought Wood Lane Athletic would win. And I said I fancied Sebastopol Rangers. So she said, all right, I'll bet you ten pen P. Well, you know, I don't bet. And the way she looked at me as much as say, oh, she can't afford ten P. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so red. And I said, all right, let's make it interesting. I said, and I threw twenty P on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> the last of the big spenders. <laughs> well, I didn't want her to think I couldn't afford ten P. Pride hat. And look what's happened now. I was looking forward to this match. The roar of the crowd, the turf under my feet, the toilet rolls. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a nice little haircut for you. I've had my knees rubbed with grease. And now I can't do it. I'll have to withdraw. Oh, who's that? That'll be the police, I'll bet. <laughs> oh, no, it is. It's Mr. Oh, Brown. It's Mr. Brown, Eric. <laughs> hello, Mr. Brown. Oh, oh no. Charles. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind this, Mr. Brown, on weekdays, but I mean on weekends and especially on match days. Hmm? <laughs> well, Mr. <clears throat> Charles, uh, you going? No, I'm not going, actually. I'm not very interested in football. Golf's my game. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could have a word with you alone. <laughs> Lemons ready for half time. <laughs> now, look, Eric, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But are you trustworthy? Pardon? I mean, you wouldn't let a friend down. Uh, would no, you? I definitely wouldn't let a friend down. Now, I'm glad to hear that because I've just had a wager on Sebastopol Rangers. <laughs> oh, no! No, 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 well, I thought it'd be churlish of me to turn down your offer. Offer? I don't know who's going to win. Eric, Eric, Eric. <laughs> oh, think of all the times we've helped each other. Do you remember when you were burgled? You lost every stick of furniture. I lent you and your sister a chair. <laughs> you charged us rent. <laughs> yeah, peppercorn rent. But the point is that you've been so neighbourly that I don't see how... Sebastopol Rangers can lose. Hmm? Ah, Mr. Brown, Charles. If Wood Lane sweeps down the field, he kicks the ball, it goes into the goal, it's not a foul, it's not offside, I go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a goal. But you don't have to blow that thing. The pea could get stuck. <laughs> the pea can't get stuck in this because this is an Acme Thunderer. It leaves me one course of. What are you going to do? I'm going to fold up the F.A. You can't do that when I place my bet. Oh, yeah, there's more to you than meets the eye. Hmm. Here's a pound for yourself. <laughs> How much do you stand to win? 
250 pounds. <laughs> oh, and you're offering me a pound? Oh, all right, I'll go to 30 shillings, but that's as far as I can go. <laughs> Mr. Brown, I wouldn't accept the 250 if you offered me the whole lot. You wouldn't accept... I knew it. I knew it all along. You're corrupt. <laughs> me? Well, I mean encouraging people to lay bets when all the time you knew it was a gamble. That's what a bet is, a gamble. You know my opinion about gambling, Sykes. If I had my way, I'd make the whole thing illegal. But the point is, you trapped me into making a wager. And I want that wager honoured. You're asking me to fix the match. I am not asking you to do anything. But if I don't collect £250 by tomorrow afternoon, there'll be a discreet little telephone call to the Football Association. <laughs> Eric, have you been upsetting Mr Brown again? <laughs> I'll tell him a thing or two. <laughs> Mr Sykes? Yes? May I come in, sir? We've been expecting you, Constable. Eric, you remember Mr Turnbull? He's the Constable that came with us when you walked to Brighton. Mm. Of course I couldn't place a face, but I recognised the helmet. <laughs> Two lips, madam. Oh, Mr Turnbull, you shouldn't have gone to that expense. Oh, it's no expense, madam. You see, my beat runs past the cemetery. <laughs> I have a lovely lady wife and four children in our, and the fifth on the way in our, <laughs> whom I am going to call Eric. <laughs> Just see what I mean? They, they're naming kids after me now. <laughs> Look, Constable, have you had a bet on Sebastopol Rangers? Well, as a matter of fact, I have, sir. Actually, of course, you see, I should frown on a venture like this, really, you know, sir, but, uh, well, I mean, uh, without me helmet, sir. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you bet? Oh, everything, madam. The wife's savings, the kids' piggy banks... <laughs> and Constable, yes, look, sit down, please. Thank now, sit mother. down there. Now, listen. I want you to get your money back. Every penny of it, call the bet off. Listen, sir, let me tell you this, sir. This is the first lapse in 30 years, you see. But I need the money, sir. I mean, do you know how much we lads in blue get? Well, no, but I have seen on the posters that the take-home pay is quite lucrative. Oh, yes, madam. Well, I mean, if you happen to be head of the CRD or head of Interpol, you know, but, I mean, my chances of getting out of those positions is sadly diminishing, you know. It's the eyesight, you see. <laughs> Constable, <clears throat> get your money back. This match is on the level. That's what I said to the runner who took my bet. <laughs> is this referee bent, he said. I said, now, listen, Wilfred, and listen, son, if he were, I should have him up before the big so fast his feet wouldn't touch the ground. <laughs> and then you placed your bet. Uh, well, uh, discreetly, sir. Yeah. And how many more people are placing bets? None, sir. I've had him arrested. <laughs> Street betting is illegal, madam. Yes, but betting shops are legal. Yes, but I mean, the odds on Sebastopol now, you know, are mean, <laughs> ridiculous, aren't they? I mean, I'm glad I got in when I did, you know. <laughs> well, sir, once again, from one of the lads who patrols in all weathers to make sure you're safekeeping, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Anyway, sir, I'll see me on my way out. Thank you, sir. Good night, you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> It's a wonderful thing you're doing, Eric. <laughs> what did you say? It's a wonderful thing you're doing. Have you gone mad? You're asking me to make Sebastopol Rangers win? Well, I can't do it. I won't do it. I know what I'll tell them. I've got a bad leg. You won't. You haven't got a bad leg. That's dishonest. <laughs> <laughs> dishonest? Yes, well, they'll get another referee. They'll have to. Oh, but you can't let them, Eric. Suppose and would lay an athletic one. How dare you risk all that money on chance? Money that doesn't belong to you. Where's your integrity? <laughs> integrity? Yes, integrity. Yes, integrity. A judgment of Solomon indeed. If Wood Lane Athletic won, it would mean the ruination of all his friends and neighbours. But if Sebastopol Rangers won, they would make money. But he would always be known as the man who fixed the match. What a dilemma. Yes, twice I lifted up the phone to cancel it and twice I put the phone down. 
right? Yes. And the crowds outside, when I opened that door, they surged. They were singing, Land of Hope and Glory, e i a d i o They carried me all the way to the ground. Yes, he was carried shoulder high to the ground. Face downwards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to recall for you now the last ten minutes of that memorable match. Well, I make it just 12 minutes to go in this local derby between Sebastopol Rangers and Wood Lane Athletic, and still no score. He's cutting it a bit fine, isn't he? Ah, oh, but if Sebastopol Rangers don't get the ball in the net, it's not his fault. Well, he could have awarded a few penalties. Well, oh, pretty <laughs> Sebastopol haven't been down the other half yet. Ricky knows what he's doing. And now Peters has the ball up to Harvey. Harvey's going through a long, long through ball to Johnson. Johnson's got it. He's scored. It's a goal. Yes, Johnson has scored. Yes, Sebastopol Rangers, after 35 minutes of the second half, are one goal up. There's Michael Johnson, and so is the referee. Oh, it's the marvellous super! <laughs> oh, yes! Yeah. I... me, who scored? You lovely old fatty daddy! <laughs> if I'd been on duty, I could have had him for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, Mrs. Van, you wonderful bread maker! <laughs> you haven't tasted me donuts yet! <laughs> Before you lot in up, there's another eight minutes to go. Yes, but it's all right for you, isn't it? I mean, you weren't kissed, were you, eh? Oh, <laughs> what you do in your off duty is your own affair. <laughs> oh, isn't there, Eric, a marvellous referee? Oh, you should always make Ricky wear shorts. Well, I don't know. <laughs> he is examining the pitch, and now he's looking at the ball, and there's only eight minutes to go by my watch, and if I didn't know better, I would say he was deliberately wasting time. Yes, yes, now he's going over to talk to the light. Good flag. No, I didn't flag. You didn't actually flag. No, I didn't actually flag. It's a perfectly good goal. It's a perfectly good goal. Yes, you did. And you didn't flag. I didn't flag. No, you didn't actually flag. I like the way you keep in this line, Jeffrey. Yeah, really, really, yeah. Up and down like a fate. Yeah, well, listen, all we have is eight minutes left. You know that. Eight minutes. I'm aware of that. Yeah, I've got two have. watches and one in my back pocket. I'm surprised you haven't heard me tick. No, I didn't. Yes, there's only eight minutes to go. I'm talking. Got where you're going. I'm talking. <laughs> so you didn't actually flag, Jeffrey? I didn't actually flag. Right, no. thank you. Next. Yes? You've only got eight minutes to go. You think that is a compass? And uh, one goal up. Is that Tully? That's good luck. Don't you even have any injury time on it? We haven't had any injuries. Not yet, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I never think I've been waiting for that. What's your name? Smith. How do you spell it? S M I T H. Ah, one of the footballing Smiths. <laughs> well, you're in the book, lad. Now get your legs together. Off you go. And you didn't actually flag. I did not actually flag. Well, these days, you'll have my job. The Wood Lane Athletic supporters are getting very restless, and no wonder. One goal down, and only six minutes to go. <laughs> well, now they've kicked off again. Wood Lane Athletic have got the top of the ball. Never again. Never. I'll avert that holiday. The stupid idiot Sykes. Yeah. Two minutes ago, old Eric was a marvellous referee. Oh, shut up. How <laughs> dare you? Well, he tripped over his own feet. Well, he can't help that. <laughs> For goodness sake, look, there's another eight minutes to go. Be your age, will you? Take matters calmly. Use a little bit of control. And I didn't like that remark you made about what I do off duty. <laughs> <laughs> He's certainly not messing about now, and once again, Wood Lane Athletic are on the attack. A lovely ball to the centre forward. He's going through on his own. He scored a goal, a brilliant shot. Birkin, he's put Wood Lane Athletic in the lead. It's offside. Ask blow your whistle. No, <laughs> blow your whistle, it's offside. No, it isn't. No, no, keep yourself. <laughs> And there's plenty more where that came from, you know, Greg. <laughs> but it wasn't offside. No, it was a perfectly good goal. Left foot, top right-hand corner. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the final score, as you remember. Sebastopol Rangers 1, Wood Lane Athletic 2. It was a good goal. A good goal. Left foot. I had the whistle ready for offside. Put it to my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It was a ship! It was a ship! 
There was an inquiry into his refereeing, but he was exonerated. But now I'd like you to know the full story, the real reason for this interview. Good evening. Why didn't you blow for offside? Because it wasn't offside. Are you calling me a liar? <laughs> Never that strong arm stuff. It was offside a mile. <laughs> the next bottle of milk you get will be round your ear all. <laughs> you need not expect any more under the counter from me. We've never had anything under the counter from you. He knows what I mean. <laughs> No, come in, Mr. Plod, all of you. <laughs> now, listen, I want to tell you something. Before I left for this match, I told you I was going to referee it fairly. If you were going to referee it fairly, you'd no reason to be there. You should have withdrawn. That's what I tried to tell you. But you wouldn't let me. You carted me off like a sack of potatoes. There'll be a few drawn blinds in the street tonight. Yes, <laughs> all right, I have something to say to you. Now, listen carefully. Whatever money you put out on Sebastopol Rangers, I personally will reimburse you. Well, I'm the house in this house. 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 I'm the that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of another story of the man who sold his house and all his possessions in order to pay back all those people who bet on Sebastopol Rangers. A story of courage, integrity, faith and hope. <laughs> oh, I think that passed off all right, Mr. Boff. Would you like a lift? Is, is this yours? Yes. We can take you as far as the Ritz. The Ritz? But I, I don't understand. With the odds being what they were, I would have been a mug not to have a bet on Wood Lane, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs>